What's going on peeps? Following my video on Uno Miles, a lot of people wanted me to do a video on another meme rapper known as Lil Drop Top Golf Cart. This snitch infamously blew up on social media during late 2020 for ratting out his entire hood. I'm talking about his homies, to his family members, he didn't let anybody slide. This has led to the red Adidas tracksuit wearing fool to earn 55 million views on YouTube and 700,000 TikTok followers. He is one of the most recognizable modern meme rappers in the Scene. But was Drop Top always dressed that way? Why did he become a professional snitch and how did he even become popular? Everything will be uncovered as today I will be the snitch in today's video. Why Lil Drop Top snitched on everybody. Vyacheslav Finko was born on January 1st, 1996. This would make him 27 years old. He was born in Detroit, Michigan near Sterling Heights. His parents divorced when he was younger, but still managed to have a solid upbringing and education. He avoided crime during his youth, despite the type of area he grew up in. He currently lives in Auburn Hills with his mother, Tatiana. He joined Twitter in 2013, but didn't start actively tweeting until 2014. He seemed to have a big interest in hip-hop, leading to him want to try it out himself. There in April 2015, 18-year-old Drop Top uploaded a video of him rapping inside of his car. No jokes or giggles, just a standard 16-bar rap. Know that I'm back with a pad and pen. Hazardous habit of rambling, the most immaculate spit crack and attack when I spaz on a goddamn track again. This started to become a hobby as he put out more videos and got feedback. He even had a few videos pop off under titles like This White Kid Can Rap. Almost reminds me of a token or Eminem, of course. This would lead to the creation of his SoundCloud account called Display Music 23. This is where he uploaded his now deleted freestyles. Yeah, most SoundCloud rappers delete their past material after they get no views or just don't match up to their biggest hits. His his oldest public song dropped on May 27, 2016 called Blocks 10. This is more of a traditional trap banger. Never play no games, man, we coming to your block. Pull up, got the fucking yapper, I be in a drop. Right away, you'll notice that this is serious music. Drop Top was actually trying to be a thing. The problem was that nobody was buying this tough guy image from a white guy in the suburbs. So he wanted to experiment with something a lot more wild. He started using sloppy, undercooked beats and having more of an off-kilter delivery. At the time, XXXTentacion was breaking into the industry with his unique scream rap sound. Drop Top wanted to replicate this style with Young Flu Shot in early 2017. <laughs> For some reason, the man himself came across the track and reposted it on SoundCloud. This resulted in his first spark of virality. By then, he proclaimed his stage name as Lil Drop Top. His name doesn't have a lot of meaning, stating he simply made it up like most meme rappers do. He does claim to have five drop tops. Several months later, he put out his debut single, I Might Hit a Lick in August, which got shared to millions through Twitter. I want to remind you that these are serious songs, not satire like he'd eventually become. The songs were doing pretty well, but he was clearly chasing trends. Towards 2018, he started paying for promo and doing clout chasing stunts to Lil's success. His plan was to comment under popular rappers' tweets and self-promote through videos of him screaming in the studio. The meme community was just getting annoyed by his presence. He was getting blocked by rappers for the constant space. He seemed proud of this attention, screenshotting every notice. There was already speculation that he was a troll just trying to get attention and make some sort of bread before falling off into irrelevancy. However, the story won't end here. Post-2018 up until 2020, he started dropping music videos that garnered 10,000 views. Posted in the trenches, Trap Man Dan, Slide, and Do-Rag Warrior. His appearance is rather distinct, a red Adidas tracksuit with a belt, which was stolen from Shears by his grandma. He describes it as drip and a style no other rapper can pull off. He even has a clothing store called Golf Cart Clothing. Another marketing stunt he tried was naming his song's popular keywords at the time like Eternal Take or a Playboy Cardi League. I feel like during this era he was caught between wanting to do serious XXXTentacion inspired music but he knew that no actual rapper would want to collaborate with him like that because he was known for being a self-promoter so instead he embraced the satirical route. Thus began his Op Pack Smoker series in late 2020. Drop Top was having issues with a childhood friend named Malik. He had grown tired of his shenanigans. He was 
constantly asking for loans, getting into mischief, and generally irritating the aspiring rapper. He made the decision to let all of Malik's private details, as well as his license plate, residence, and car model, out in a SoundCloud recording as a way to express his annoyance. It was over a Detroit rap style beat, more in the scam rap territory. This resulted in the first Op Pack Smoker track being discovered by popular Twitter pages and being reposted, gaining 2 million impressions in a day. Due to its Twitter and Instagram virality, it inspired YouTube reactors to give their take on it. I'm Dante was one of the more popular ones. It was a unique style of storytelling that kept people wondering who he was going to expose next. This only encouraged him to continue making these songs as nobody was out here snitching on their own hood mid-track. It was a big break that he'd been waiting for. He has been snitching ever since. His plan was to go to various Detroit hoods, posing as a criminal, becoming fake friends with actual criminals, and later snitch on them. He is pretty much an undercover cop, except the dude probably hasn't gotten anyone arrested. What helped the song generate so much buzz was the ongoing discussion of 6 9 snitching on the 9 Trey Bloods, which lessened his sentence from 47 years to 2 years. He sees Takashi as a role model for his humor despite his problematic history. In a sense, the song makes fun of rappers who admit to doing dangerous crimes in extensive detail. There are 10 parts, but he managed to make each song stand out from the other, whether he was rapping on a UK grime beat or an Enli Choppa type beat. The lyrical content was the most important part though. I also love the ad lib clarification after each bar, stating an address and yelling in the background. He prefers to spread his content through Twitter the most as YouTube and Instagram can be rather strict on what gets shared, especially if he's exposing people's personal details. He saw himself as a truth teller and claims that the police offered him $60,000 per criminal he snitched on. He was also talking about being a crip, but he wears a lot of red. In his song Throw It Up, he says he's both a blood and a crip, however that works. After exposing his entire neighborhood, bloodline, and getting kicked out of every group chat, he decided to target influence. He leveled up and went after popular YouTubers and musicians like I'm Dante, Adam22, Mario Judah, Trippy Red, and Blackie Speaks. I'm Dante took the bait and found himself reacting to several more of Drop Top songs because he was apparently leaking his address and password. He's a reactor, so he's going to take any sort of entertaining content he can get. This wasn't the only content creator who responded, though. He claimed that Adam22 lived under a bridge. He then revealed a number of personal details about Adam22, including his social security number, license plate, phone number, and even the car his grandma drove. I'm surprised he didn't reveal how much of a cuck he'd become. This guy chuckled out of the popular podcast host who invited him to be on his show. He did his first professional interview with No Jumper on June 30th, 2021. The interview received 850,000 views. Through this interview, we learn a few things. First of all, he pretty much admits he's a satire. He is a very careful person, likely due to his stitching habits, and doesn't try to link up with a lot of people to keep his mysterious look. The issue is based on his interviews, he doesn't seem like he is used to being on camera and his character doesn't seem believable when he's having an actual conversation. Of course we know everything is fake, but he isn't that convincing. He stated that he has worked with incentive-based projects promoted on billboards, earning $25,000 for each one where he locates their person and their details. He then invests that money into the stock market and Bitcoin, eventually building up his stock. He's also putting together a money-making course. He's also currently single, but is still active in the dating scene with the use of Tinder. He's had occurrences when he has catfished woman. That's right, he's even scamming people on Tinder. But he still has plans to settle down when he meets the right person. Soon the snitching songs were milked dry and he had to switch it up. He moved towards content that is a bit more suspicious. It was around the time when Aiden Ross was making millions off of being sus in 2021. He put out guac. <laughs> He put out Guac Guac, which was about a girl giving him that Guac Guac. The hook for the song was highlighted for being the dumbest way to describe getting head on a rap song. He also had bars about sucking his own dick and fucking her in her shit. After that was twerking on the ops. Yes, he went from snitching on his ops to throwing it back on them. Of course it came out during Pride Month. These bars are so explicit that I don't even think I can repeat them in this video. I'm trying to be a better Christian man, what can I say? He seems aware of how to market himself on social media. He posts five times a day on TikTok doing some algorithm farming. The people see this and go to his page, you know the drill. He seems very tapped into social media, so he's not an idiot. He knows what he is doing, and to give him credit, it is working. His biggest song was released on September 27th, 2021 called Duke. The song is about him going to the studio to not record a song, but to take a Duke. 
and then it just continues with him just rhyming absolute nonsense. This song was practically spammed by Drop Top all over his social media. He was trying to appeal to the growing TikTok market and build a community. It eventually became his biggest song to date with 900,000 Spotify streams being recognized for its bizarre flow and lyrical content. Since then, he hasn't done a whole lot musically. He seems to be focused on growing his TikTok account with 700,000 followers. This page is filled with statements that make absolutely no sense, picking fun of people that are fake deep, or something stupidly obvious over a video of him exiting his car or a selfie of him making a stupid face looking like he hasn't showered in two years. Yet, he has generated 320 million TikTok views from his antics. Some of these street interviews he has done with people have millions of views due to how stupid his answers are. But believe it or not, he has been recognized by actual rappers like Ken Carson and Destroy Lonely. They had a show in Detroit that Drop Top attended. They saw him outside and dapped him up. Drop Top had to let him know that they were in his hood and wanted to check in with them. He was also noticed by Lil Uzi Vert at a Yeet show. So, the satirical meme rapper and self-proclaimed professional snitch has had a heck of a journey. He's made a name for himself through his quick-witted and clever bars. He went from a token knockoff trying to get people to take him seriously on Twitter to a XXXTentacion wannabe to a snitch to the strange social media influencer we see him as today. What I've learned is that Drop Top knows how to capitalize off viral trends effectively like the 6 9 snitching controversy making the Op Pack Smoker series and the Aiden Ross Susway putting out twerk on the Ops. He's an excellent troll whose antics span nearly a decade and it's impressive he's been able to stay somewhat relevant each year. Thank you for watching this video, share this to Drop Top and see if he snitches on me next. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.